This presentation will discuss seventh chord inversions. If you don't know how to write seventh chords yet, you'll want to watch that video first. Closed position for seventh chords means that all four pitches will be stacked in thirds. We also would call that root position because the root of the chord is the lowest note. And here we have a C major seventh chord in root position, also in closed position. However, when the root is not the lowest note of a seventh chord, the chord is considered inverted. For seventh chords, we have only three options. Either the third will be the lowest, or the fifth, or the seventh. When the third of the chord is the lowest, that would be first inversion. And you can see there that the C, which is the still the root note, even though it's not the lowest pitch, C is still the root but we spell it now E, G, B, C, and that sounds like this. You can hear that clash from the B natural to the C natural is just a half step. Still has the same four pitches, C is still the root, they're just out of order. And uh, it's kind of interesting to note that when the notes clash like that, the lower note, or even if it's a flat or sharp, will go to the left. So you can see that um, since the B to C is clashing there, the B goes to the left. And then for clarity, we just line those up all the way to the left. When the fifth of the chord is the lowest pitch, that would be second inversion. So C is blue there, it's still the root. G, B, C, E. Again, the B goes to the left there, and the other ones are all lined up on top of each other. And then when the seventh of the chord is the lowest pitch, that would be the third inversion. And this one will start off with that half step, so kind of interesting. Let's look at this example. We've got an A, a C sharp, a D and an F sharp. And again, notice that the lower sharp sign is to the left. So if we were to restack these, first of all, I would uh, throw the F sharp down an octave, and we're pretty close there. And then also the D would need to be lowered an octave. And there we have them stacked properly. D, F sharp, A, C, all in thirds. It's a D major seventh chord but we're in second inversion. So we want to start with the A as the lowest. Same chord, same quality, same letter names, just a different order. The inversion symbols are a shorthand way of writing the seventh chords when they're in inversion. For a root posi the position seventh chord, the first interval from Do is a third, and then a fifth, and then a seventh. The only thing we need to designate the seventh chord in root position is a seven. Otherwise, we would assume it's a triad if there was nothing else. So this would be a C major seventh. When we have a first inversion, let's look at the intervals there. Well, we start off with our third and our fifth still, and then above the lowest note, not the root note, from the E to the C is a sixth. Okay, so the shorthand writing that one is 6-5. We just do the top two. Uh, we can't just use 6 because that's used already in triads. Can't use 5-3 either. That's also used in triads. Second inversion, seventh chord, when the fifth is the lowest, the first interval is a third, then a fourth, and then a sixth. Okay, we can't use 6-4 because we already used that in triads. So our next option is 4-3. That would be second inversion symbol. And then finally, when the seventh is the lowest, we have third inversion. And the first thing we have is a second, and then a fourth, and then a sixth. Again, we can't use 6-4, so we're going to use 4-2. Uh, occasionally, some people will just write 2. 
Uh, that's acceptable, but 4-2 is the clearest way of writing that in my opinion. So a quick review, root position, all four eggs stacked on top of each other, root is the lowest, just have to put a 7 there. For first inversion, when the third is the lowest, the symbol is 6-5. Second inversion, the fifth is the lowest, 4-3. And then third inversion, the seventh is the lowest, 4-2.